Hall of Famer Reggie Miller back on the program. Steph Curry goes for 43 in Game 4. No game on Sunday. Game coming up tonight in San Francisco. Golden State favored by three and a half. Who do you like, Reg? Why do I feel like I'm playing in this game? I, I, I'm just as nervous in this series. Uh, Why? Look, let, me, let, me, let me tell you this. It's because you, as a former athlete, um, and obviously – having been on Turner for the last 15 plus years, you get invested in these teams in certain individuals and those sweaty palms start to come back. And now that the series is two, two as a player, these were always the best games to play in the swing game five, because right now, whoever wins game five, you are one game away from immortality, right? It's almost like you can taste it, but so many things can go wrong or right for your particular team. And I feel like I'm, I'm living through the Celtics. I'm living through the Warriors. I'm living on every shot. You know, watching Draymond Green struggle, I, I feel it. So that's why I'm like so nervous and I'm not even playing it's fun to watch. I'm glad I'm not participating because I, I couldn't bear the stress. But it's interesting and fun to watch being a former player, being in some of their shoes and understanding what they're going through. Okay. Give me what the Celtics philosophy was supposed to be guarding Steph Curry in game four. Put him in every offensive package that they were going to do. And we've seen this throughout the playoffs. So every time Marcus Smart is going up, because that's who Steph is really guarding is Marcus Smart. That's why they're always bringing either Jalen Brown or Tatum up in a simple one-two screen so they can get this switch and Curry has to guard one of those two guys. The problem for the Celtics is Jason Tatum is not having one of those series that we saw when he played Brooklyn and KD or Milwaukee and Giannis. He's struggling. Brown is playing great. So, to me, they're somewhat letting Steph off the hook because Jason Tatum is not having one of those series. But you want to put Steph in every action. You want him to work at the defensive end to try to take some of that steam away from his offense, which really hasn't happened in this series, Theodore. Okay, but I don't understand the open looks that he's getting. I, I understand, you know, he's he's a better dribbler than we give him credit for. He creates separation, but they're doing the same thing at the other end. They get Steph in a pick and roll. Al Horford's on him, and he takes advantage of that. But at, at some point, does Boston just say, we're going to double you? We're going to make sure if anybody shoots at Draymond Green, we'll even leave him open. I can't let Steph Curry have the ball, even though he's getting contested looks. I, I just don't understand how we don't take – they don't take the ball out of his hands. Well, here, here, here's two problems that the Celtics are doing, especially on that high screen and roll. Al Horford, and more particular, uh, Robert Williams. They're staying so low. So when he comes off that high screen and roll – and the big is in a drop, that's like, you know, shoot, target shooting for Stephen Curry. To me, either trap and get the ball out of his hands, but here's the problem when you trap Steph. Because Draymond Green is so good at passing the basketball, I know he's not offensively, he's been challenged in this series, but now the Warriors have the mismatch. So when you trap them, it's three on two on the backside. So it's either a lob to Looney or it's a spray open three to Poole or Wiggins in the corner or a layup for Looney. So that's the problem when you trap him. You are opening up a lot more possibilities and other guys getting involved as opposed to hoping and wishing that Curry misses the shot, which, you know, he's what, 50, 49, and 86 in this series. He's not doing Where would you rank, how would you rank that performance on Friday night by Curry? Well, no question, arguably, it's his greatest playoff performance. I think you look at the great players, everyone has a signature game. Michael Jordan has quite a few of them, but, you know, people will always remember the flu game or the shot over Elo in Cleveland or the shrug versus Portland. 
Uh, Kobe has a lot. Shaq, LeBron. To me, this is Curry's signature moment. Um, and it's funny because everyone wants to, to pile on because he's never won a finals MVP. You know, two of his three championships, he was playing with, you know, a top five player of all time in Kevin Durant. Um, and in my opinion, he should have won that first one. I know Eagle Dollar got it for his defense, but Curry, if you look at his numbers, because he was MVP that season, his numbers were better in the finals than they were during the regular season. So it was a vintage performance, his best postseason performance. And what's scary is now that he has done that, see, I, I, I think. Is he the, the MVP first, no matter what? When this is I, I would. I, I think it's only been done once by Jerry, Jerry. West, yeah. but if I remember right. Yeah. I don't think there's anyone close to him. I, I think if there's if you're going to give it to a Celtic, it would be Jalen Brown. But he's had his challenges in this series. The one constant in this series has been Stephen Curry. I know there's a lot of games left to be played, but through four games, mm. it's like Curry and everyone else, like how we take – Big Tiger in the field back in the day. It's Curry and everyone else because of how he's been playing. Marcus Smart's Defensive Player of the Year, correct? He is. Why isn't he guarding Steph Curry? He is until they come to the switch. They either are switching or they are dropping. I mean, the, it's somewhat laughable, the Defensive Player of the Year, because you just think, okay, go out there and shut them down. No one can shut anyone down in our league one-on-one. Uh, offensive players are too gifted. That's not going to happen. Obviously, you need help. But the way they are playing this high screen and roll, and how about their transition defense is terrible. That's been one of the Celtics' main weapons defensively was getting back in transition and building out and guarding that three-point line. We have not seen that. If you could have any wing defender guard Steph Curry all the time, who would give him the most trouble? Probably Scottie Pippen. Oh. I would go with Scottie because if you go back in those series where he won twice against Utah, it was his defense on uh, John Stockton, right? They were going to take the point guard out. This series versus us in the conference finals, Phil Jackson said, take Mark Jackson out. It's like he goes to the head of the snake. If you can take him out, that's going to disrupt the rest of their offense. I think they would put Scotty on on Curry and have that length really disrupt him. Do you think Jordan would be upset that you picked Scotty to guard Steph Curry and not him? As much as I love Michael Jordan, I was giving buckets to Michael Jordan. He's not, <laughs> he's not. No, he's a great defender. Don't get me wrong. I don't want people to be like hitting me later. Unbelievable defender. But you got to be committed. Michael's job was great defensively, but he offensively, that's where he was going to do most of his damage. He wouldn't be that committed to taking out and fun. You see how much Curry runs? He's not good. That's me. That, so there was no way he was going to be able to commit to doing that, running all day. that But but Pippen could. He's Reggie Miller, the Hall of Famer. Game five coming up tonight. Golden State favored by three and a half. Are you going to change your pick because you were going with the Boston Celtics? No, no, I'm still with the Celtics. Now, it, it's funny when you live with an almost nine-year-old who idolizes, you know, Stephen Curry, the ebb and flows in our household have been – like, one day he's up because, you know, Curry and them tied the series. Game three, he was sad, moping around here, wouldn't clean up his room. I'm like, Riker, what's the deal? I, I just don't feel good, Dad. I'm like, what do you mean you don't feel good? My Warriors are down. And then Curry has the 43 unbelievable performance. We're back. We're back. I'm like, what are you talking about? We're back. So, yeah, I'm sticking with Boston. Okay. I, We'll believe it's going to be a seven-game series, yeah. and it's going to be an unbelievable finish, I believe. Uh, Anthony Davis says he hasn't taken a shot since April. What is this? Seriously. What's worse, saying it or not doing it? 
saying it. Because first of all, this is your job. I, I am, look, this is why the Lakers are, were in the predicament they were. I'm surprised. Has LeBron come back on top and said, dude, what the hell? LeBron should be, like, disappointed in this. LeBron's in the front yard of his house shooting with his kids right now. But when a season ended for you, how long before you picked up a basketball? I would say with no basketball, two weeks, two to three weeks. Then you get into a gym and just do spot location shots and lifting weights. That's what you do maybe for the first month. And then you start to ramp it up as it goes. For him to say he hasn't even looked, picked up, done a jump stop, that's amazing. Because of all the injuries they had, he missed a lot of games. Why are you taking time off? You only played, what, 45, 50 games this season? But I wonder, Reg, there are guys who don't love basketball. They're great at basketball or very good at basketball, but you have to love basketball. And I don't know Anthony Davis, but I would think just, I mean, at my age, I still love to just shoot. Yes. And, yes. And, and I don't have to, you know, perform for anybody, but I still want to go out there and shoot and make every shot I take. It, I don't it, know if Anthony Davis loves the grind of getting better. You have an opportunity because he's already an all-time great. He was on the, you know, the 75th team, right? He's already won a championship. Yeah. You have an opportunity to be one of the greatest players and playing for one of the greatest franchise. And right now you're in the waning years of the best player of your generation in LeBron James. To me, if I was in that situation, I would be doing everything I can to extend LeBron's years and to win championships with a historic franchise like the Lakers. Yeah. It baffles me when I saw that comment from him because, you know, living in Los Angeles, we all just think, oh, God, he's going to the bathroom, he's going to twist his ankle and be out a month. <laughs> That's how we think out here yeah. with Anthony Davis, yeah. right? Yeah. So for him to say, I haven't shot or picked up a basketball after, what, that April 5th Suns game, that's baffling. It really is baffling. Shaq is on record as saying that his Lakers with Kobe could beat Golden State when Durant was there and beat Michael Jordan's Bulls. It's, is that... Is that expected, though? I mean, if you're Shaq... You're supposed to say that, right? Aren't you supposed to say that? Well, let's handicap those teams. If I said... Okay. Well, what... Be and, objective. Be objective. I will. And what rules are we playing with? Ooh. The 90s or today's rules? Let's, let's do the 90s. Because on both of those teams, the Warriors and the Bulls, they would have had zero answer for young Shaq. Okay, so if he's able to play bully ball, it's not a three-point shooting league, it's going to be very hard to beat that one-two combination. As great as Michael was, I think the greatest thing he, that the Bulls did was not playing Houston in those two championships that the Rockets won because they would have had no answer for Hakeem Olajuwon. They certainly would have Wait, had no you would have picked the Rockets over the Bulls in those two years? Man, it – I would have loved to have seen it. Mad Max versus Michael Jordan. I, I would have loved to have seen it. I can I mean, see the headlines coming out of this interview. Jordan can't guard me. And Akeem <laughs> would have beaten the Bulls in those two championships. That's I, I'm just saying, as much as we love Michael Jordan, I'm one of them. I was in it. I was right in the middle of it. Okay, but if I had Golden State today's rules with Durant and Steph and Clay against Shaq and Kobe today's rules and then Golden State versus the Bulls today's rules. Who do you like? I might, I, I might roll with the Golden State, KD, Steph, Draymond, and Clay over the Lakers in today's rules of freedom of movement, threes. What about the Bulls? They had a lot of long guys on the perimeter to play defense there. They do. I think the Bulls would be a better matchup versus Golden State because of those wing players. I would pick 
Chicago over KD in those guys. It's fascinating. I don't think I would do that. I, you I, would go with KD. I, you would go yeah. Golden State over Chicago. Yes. I'm telling you this: freedom of movement. But I'm doing the math here, Reg. I'm doing the Michael math. Michael Jordan's going to average 45 in that series. Okay. Who's going to guard him? Nobody. Steve Kerr. But nobody Steve ever Kerr did. Steve Kerr is going to get so many wide open looks in threes because of Michael. Okay. And Scotty. Okay. All I know is I got who's guarding no. Kate? Who's guarding? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got no, uh, no, 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 no. I'm putting Ron Harper on Curry. I'm putting Michael Jordan on Clay, and I'm putting Scotty on KD. I'm going with Chicago. Okay. I'm going with Chicago in six. In six? Okay. Right. Six. I'm going with Chicago in six. Because Jordan never played game seven. You know, he didn't, he didn't he need a game. Did. <laughs> well, he did one time. Uh, okay. Remind us of that Eastern Conference final. Lost. Yeah. But we took him to the break and should have won. <laughs> Jump ball. Here it is. Jump ball. Three minutes left. We are up six. <laughs> We're up. We win the jump ball, and if we score, we go up eight with a little over three minutes left. Rick Smith, 7'4", versus Scottie Pippen, 6'7". Who would you think would have the advantage in that jump ball? Rick Smith. If we win that, we go up eight, Scotty wins, Finds that damn little Steve Kerr in the corner. They knock down a three, cut it in half, and we just win in the tank. Reggie right. Miller blames Rick Smith. Oh, <laughs> look at the headlines coming out of there. I'm killing Jordan. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm killing the bull. I'm killing – no, I'm not blaming Rick. But you would think a seven-foot-four guy would win that tip. But if I – go back to Shaq. If Shaq played today – Shaq in his prime, but growing up in this basketball environment. Now, Shaq was never a good shooter. Not everybody should shoot threes, but if Shaq is coming up in a three-point, you know, crazy... He would, have, he would have developed a, a 12- to 15-footer, don't mm-hmm. you know? He, 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 no, he couldn't even shoot a free throw. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, I still think he would be dominant. <laughs> okay, but we're going to have these players that are going to come up. Right. And I, I feel like somebody is going to go, we're going to be counter to what you do. You shoot threes, this guy is going to score because nobody is, is going to be able to guard him. Here's the thing. Don't you think the way the game is played is perhaps we just haven't seen the next Shaq yeah. dominant big man? We can go back to playing like, you know, with Patrick Ewing and inside out. We could. It, it's not always going to be a three-point dominated game. But like who would is. be better today, today's rules, Jordan or Shaq? Jordan. In today's rules, Jordan, because he could shoot. He yeah, could but nobody's got – who's guard? If everybody's on the perimeter, you throw Shaq down there, nobody's going to guard Shaq. Shaq would get as many points as he wanted to get. Absolutely, as as well. So would Michael Jordan because you couldn't hand check and hold him. Yeah. And his first step. People keep forgetting how quick his first step was and is. Well, what? <laughs> Could you take yeah. Jordan now? Well, since we are creating headlines yeah. today. <laughs> yeah. Of course you can take it. Your airness. Yeah. I'm ready for you. You could yes. t- you could take Jordan now. Now. Now, back then, <laughs> no. Now, I think I could, yes. No, I don't think I could. I know oh, I could. I know you could. I could now. Why couldn't I have been like this 25 <laughs> well, years ago? Why couldn't he have been like he is now? Right, right. <laughs> Damn you. Would you give up a pinky? To, like on your left hand. Yeah, to yeah, have beat, I, I hate pinkies too. I to hate. To <laughs> I hate pinkies. So would I give up two pinkies for two rings? I think I would. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'll be like this, hey, everybody. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> yes, I would. Could see, you out? Could you outshoot Shaq with eight fingers? 
I think I could. <laughs> yes, I could. All you need are two fingers and your thumb to be <laughs> able to shoot. That's all I saw was this. <laughs> you shoot with this. This is just your guy, okay. man. Yeah. And this is your fuck. This is all you're doing anyways. Yeah. That's all you're doing. I would give him up in a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, enjoy the game. And I, you know, I'm not going to text you right I'm after. I'm going to text you. I'm going to be texting you because I... Uh, the last two games, I was in Steamboat. And by the way, you and the fellas, the Danettes, are huge in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. They love the show. Oh. So they, they, they heard us talking. Oh, awesome. Oh, they love you up there. So I wasn't able to watch the last two games. I will actually get a chance to watch the game with Riker tonight. Okay. So we will be texting you okay. during the game. That's fine. That's fine. And uh, playing it that way. Thank you, Reg. You're the best, Theodore. That's Reggie Miller. Reggie Miller. Aloysius. Hall of Famer.